गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स नाउ द सेंट्रल कॉन्सेप्ट इन माई थ्री लेक्चर्स ऑन आल मार्क्स विल बी बेस एंड सुपर स्ट्रक्चर एंड प्राइमरिली आई विल बी डीलिंग विथ वन बुक दास कैपिटल ओरिजिनली पब्लिश इन एटीन सिक्सटी सेवन but i will primarily refer to uh, the english translations there are uh, two english translations of capital uh, one uh, from penguin books uh, which had a very long introduction by arnest mendel uh i think some of you are familiar with the name uh he is a very important marxist economist and uh, some people regard his book late capitalism as a natural complementary to das capital that is capital one uh then there is another translation of uh, karl marx uh, das kapital it is from oxford university press and uh, it has an introduction by maclennan again a very important uh, marxist uh, theorist of social sciences let me give you a very brief introduction of what we expect from theoretical point of view in each of the four courses which you are attending in this semester for example in methodology of social sciences there is a centrality of max weber and emile durkheim and karl marx is a marginal theorist in this course secondly in a stratification karl marx and max weber are major theorists and durkheim is a marginal theorist in the course on the stratification third uh, in in your course on a state and society in india Max Weber and Karl Marx are foundational theorists. Now, you see that I am using foundational theorists and not major theorists because you are primarily not taught Max Weber and Karl Marx directly. Rather, you are taught Weberian theory of a state and society in India, Marxist theory of a state and society in India. and in this uh, course on the state and society in india durkheim is a minor theorist you are not taught uh, or you are not supposed to be taught uh, imail durkheim's view about the state and society in india to you people that is the first semester students now i am not saying that uh, the other courses which you will be reading in second third and fourth semesters the uh, theorists are not important they are for example in the course on family and kinship in india uh, imail durkheim is the major theorist and he the disciples like uh, claude levi strauss they are actually brown Marshall Moss, uh, then also people uh, like David Snyder, and their Indian, you know, Chelaj or disciples are the major theorists. Whereas uh, Marx is very, very marginal in 
that course which you will read in second or third semester on family and marriage in India. Uh, in the same way, there is a course on religion and society in India. In that course, uh, Imail Khaim is the major theorist, foundational theorist, and Max Weber is the, is the, uh, the complementary theorist. Uh, Add in uh, family and kinship in India. Uh, you have uh, Imail Khaim and uh, to some extent, uh, indirectly, not directly, when they deal with uh, the feminist theory of marriage and family, they bring in a synthesis of Karl Marx and the feminist theories. Uh, in the same way, in the course on uh, religion and society in India, you have primarily Michael Kheim and Max Weber, and uh, Marx is a minor theorist in uh, religion and society in India course, although uh, some, some references uh, will be given to you and uh, they may be referred. Uh, they are not uh, Marxist theories as such. But you can club them as uh, neo Marxist or uh, critical theorist. Uh, now, in critical theory, there are three major foundational thinkers Karl Marx, uh, Sigmund Freud, and Max Weber. Now, there is again a course which you will be taught uh, in the third or fourth semester. These are not fixed courses, you know, every year uh, faculty decides which course will be taught to which batch. Uh, that is titled Economy and Society in India. In that course, Max Weber is the foundational theorist, followed by Karl Marx and Emile Durkheim is a minor theorist. In contrast, in this course, which I am teaching to you, sociological thinkers. Uh, all the three thinkers are important, but as you have seen in other courses, in this course also, uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, some disparity between importance. And so far as I know, uh, in this course on sociological thinkers, Emile Durkheim is the nucleus around which theory of Marx and Weber are articulated anywhere in the world after the global stagflation of September 2007 and 8. Now, uh, this I am telling you on the basis of uh, my knowledge of different syllabuses around the world, uh, but I am sure when the corona pandemic uh, is uh, no more as dreaded as it is today, uh, the new courses on uh, sociological thinkers will be uh, designed and in that also the Imail Durkheim will have upper hand than Marx and Weber because uh, of the obvious reason which you have already read in the earlier classes. Now let us take uh, the book uh, Capital uh, Volume 1 and at the moment I am uh, relying more on the Penguin Classics three volumes of capital, but primarily uh, to the first semester students, uh, we teach only uh, capital volume one and then, uh, you know, economic and philosophical manuscripts of uh, 1840s. Now, uh, I have already uh, dealt with economic and philosophical uh, manuscript. Uh, there are two dates, uh, in French it was published in uh, uh, 
1844 and the English translation came in 1848. Now uh, let us see what is central in Capital Volume 1. I will give some points uh, because I have to give three lectures on the concept of base and superstructure in Karl Marx. Uh, now, in your undergraduate courses, in case you have been a sociology student, you must have been taught that uh, base and superstructure deals with uh, uh, the materialist interpretation of history. But uh, in your postgraduate course, which you are attending at the moment, uh, the reference is not so much on materialist interpretation of history, rather the reference is to a theory of society inclusive of economy, polity, culture, family, etc. Therefore, uh, as I said, Capital Volume 1 becomes a foundational book of Karl Marx like Economy and Society of Max Weber is a foundational book in this course and uh, at least three books of Durkheim are foundational uh, Division of Labor in Society, Suicide and Professional Ethics and Civic Morals now what about other books? Uh, rules of sociological method is primarily covered in methodology of social sciences. In the same way, we teach economy and society in, in this course and uh, uh, methodology of social sciences uh, by Max Weber is taught in the other course of methodology and social sciences. Uh, in the same way, in uh, political sociology, uh, Max Weber's uh, uh, articles included in from Max Weber, edited by Gertrude Mills, is taught. And uh, in this course, also we deal with uh, two vocational lectures from the book from Max Weber, but we more rely on a small book uh, posthumously uh, published and made popular in, 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 in English language called Basic Concepts of Sociology, but Basic Concepts of Sociology are from Max Weber, these are uh, secondary or supplementary books. The foundational book is Economy and Society by Max Weber. Although uh, that uh, book uh, is a very big, two volume book, uh, and uh, both books are around 600 pages, therefore, uh, uh, 1200 plus pages. It is not expected that any student will be able to read the full book. Therefore, primarily you have to rely on the class lecture and then you can refer to the readings referred in the course outline. In the same way, uh, I said about uh, my time that he has written many books. Uh, we are not dealing with uh, uh, elementary forms of religious life uh, in the same way in which we deal with uh, the suicide or the division of labor in society or we will be dealing with uh, professional ethics and civic morals. The religion is simple. In the other course of religion and society in India, you will be taught that course in uh, a much more uh, substantive way. Now let us uh, come to the capital uh, one one and here I am uh, primarily giving you five points 
uh, which uh, Karl, uh, sorry, Hans uh, Mendel has outlined in the introduction of the same book, uh, which is published by the Penguin. And the five points are the following. Uh, once we deal with uh, the five points, then we will come to the text of the book. Now, the first uh, point, which uh, Karl, uh, sorry, um, I'm really sorry, Hans Mendel uh, had outlined for us is that uh, what Marx said, Capital explained was above all the ruthless and irresistible impulse to growth which characterized production for private profit and the predominant use of profit or capital accumulation. First I will explain, uh, you know, these five points uh, and then uh, it will be uh, clear to you, but before I explain, let me read out the five points. The second point is that the concentration of wealth and power in a small number of giant industrial and financial corporations had brought with it an increasing universal struggle between capital and labor. The third point is that Marx is much more an economist of the 20th century than of the 19th. Today, Western world is much nearer to the pure model of capital than was the world in which this book was composed. Fourth point, in capital, Marx's fundamental aim was to lay bare the laws of motion which govern the origins, the rise, the development, the decline, and the disappearance of a given social form of economic organization. Fifth, he was not seeking the universal law of economic organization. In Capital Volume 1, there is no such law, directly or indirectly. These are five major points which Ernst Mendel had Uh, you know, uh, emphasized in his introduction to the English translation 
of Capital Volume 1 published by Penguin Books. Now let us take the third point first for further elaboration or explanation. Mendel is saying that Marx is much more an economist of the 20th century than of the 19th. Now what does he emphasize it? Please remember that Marx was a theorist, philosopher, political economist and economic historian of 19th century. He had died in 1883 and he published only one book in his lifetime that was Capital Volume 1 and it was published in 1867. Before that, there was only one publication that was Manifesto of the Communist Party, which is known as the Communist Manifesto, but uh, it was not written by Marx alone, it was written as a political pamphlet for mobilizing the French people for a revolution in 1848 and it was a joint work of Frederick Engels and uh, Karl Marx. Now uh, the mature Marx or later Marx does not regard that uh, that book, the Communist uh, Manifesto, uh, had a, uh, you know, uh, had a writing which he would uh, be proud of. Therefore, you know, in, in the letters which Karl Marx wrote to his friends and uh, some of the distant relatives and also his wife, he uh, refers and em emphasizes that I have published only one book, uh, Das Kapital in German, uh, published in 1867. And uh, I have inspired some books written by uh, Frederick Engels, but these are writings of Frederick Engels. For example, uh, it is said by Frederick Engels. Uh, in the preface to a book which he wrote, The Origin of Family, Private Property and the State, that it was Karl Marx's idea that I should write this book. Now why Frederick Engels said that Marx read a book called Ancient Society written by an American anthropologist Henry Morgan, Louis Henry Morgan. Now uh, Louis Henry Morgan or sometimes Louis Henry Morgan uh, wrote two books but Marx had read only the first book, Ancient Society, and he was so much thrilled that he suggested his friend and collaborator, uh, Frederick Engels, that since I have read the manuscript, which is not published until now, because the American establishment had banned the manuscript of Morgan and said that any publisher which will publish this book 
will be liable to penal action. He or she, the publisher, will be punished. Therefore, although America claims today that uh, it is the moral guardian of uh, freedom of expression and uh, liberal democracy, but American history, even after independence from the British, uh, you know, uh, British suzerainty, was not a very glorious history. They have been banning books and uh, their laws were not very, very democratic, particularly for the non-Anglo-Saxon uh, citizens of United States of America, primarily the Red Indians or the Blacks, uh, which had uh, African origin. And they have also not been nice to the Mongoloids of uh, Asia. And uh, they were also not uh, very, very comfortable with two authors, uh, Charles Darwin. Although today they will not concede it, but until 1980, you know, the Christian lobby in the United States had banned origin of a species of uh, Charles Darwin as a book or textbook which can be used in a school curriculum in the United States. In other words, they were still teaching until 1980s that, uh, you know, man evolved on earth on the lines it is written in the Old Testament, the common book of the Abrahamic religions like uh, Judaism, uh, Islam and Christianity. Uh, the second book which they had banned was that of uh, Louis Henry Morgan's uh, Ancient Society. Later on, you know, uh, through the intervention of uh, people like uh, uh, Thomas Paine, Karl Marx, and uh, Emerson, many people. Uh, there is some order in some. But still, uh, there is a fact, historical fact, social fact, which uh, cannot be denied that in almost uh, 200 years uh, history of uh, United States of uh, America, only two presidents were non-protestants. In other words, 99.9% .9 of American presidents have been from one religious denomination. And what is that? And what is that? That is Protestant Christianity primarily represented by Benjamin Franklin, whom Max Weber, you know, regards as the foundational thinker of capitalism. Now, when I was teaching earlier, some of you must have regarded me as anti Valerian. Uh, when I was teaching uh, Marxist concept of man, some of you must uh, be thinking that uh, I am not uh, 
you know, a Marxist. Of course, I am neither a Weberian nor a Marxist nor a Lutkinian. As I said, I am a Buddhist sociologist and I am neutral to all the three. But what is interesting is that uh, Karl Marx was much more truthful when he was narrating the story of rise of capitalism and economic phenomena. Whereas Max Weber's contribution is important. I do not deny that now. But it is important as a data, not as a theory. I, of course, read Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism, including its criticism by his contemporary, Max Weber's contemporary, and also my contemporary. But I do think that Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism is a book of political sociology and not of economic sociology. Therefore, uh, I deal with Max Weber when I deal with the concept of market and the concept of vocation in contemporary society. Whereas, uh, you know, uh, the Parsonians, uh, Parsons himself and his disciples anywhere in the world, they regard Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism as a foundational book. Uh, which is very important to understand the economic phenomena or social phenomena of, uh, uh, you know, the capitalist mode of production. Uh, I told you that uh, from the time uh, Max Weber started uh, writing about uh, society. Earlier he was writing about uh, engineering, he was writing about politics, he was not, uh, you know, academic uh, political sociology, but he was a politician and he was writing politi political comments, he was making manifestos, he was uh, making manuals for uh, political reforms, he was uh, writing about uh, law, economic history of the world, as an academic uh, theorist, uh, he has spent only last 20 years of his life. When he died in 1920. Therefore, it is around uh, the 20th century that it after, uh, you know, uh, the year uh, uh, 1900 that Max Weber uh, took, uh, you know, uh, some sort of uh, retirement from active politics. Uh, he was also not keeping good health throughout his adult life. And uh, once he decided that uh, now enough is enough, I must uh, concentrate my uh, energy in academic writing. And uh, I should not participate uh, in uh, politics or I should not be part of uh, political or legal activism. Uh, then he uh, started working on economy and society. And uh, economy and society is not only a book of uh, economic sociology. This is a substantive book on uh, the theory of society as uh, Capital Volume 1 is a book uh, on the theory of society and it includes uh, almost uh, every aspect of uh, society uh, like capital volume one i'm talking about economic and society but what is striking is that uh, unlike uh, the claim made by talbot parsons and uh, his uh, disciples uh, there is no empirical evidence to uh, 
validate or uh, you know verify the Parsonian theory superimposed on uh, you know the working papers of uh, Max Weber for writing his magnum opus Economy and Society. Uh, it cannot be said that it was a protestant ethic which led to the growth of capitalism in Western Europe or United States of America. But what can be said emphatically is that protestant theology of John Calvin and uh, uh, popularly interpreted for the masses by Benjamin Franklin is a terribly important uh, book. The original book, uh, John Calvin's commentary on the Bible and uh, its popular introduction or rather populist interpretation for the common uh, protestants in the United States of America by Benjamin Franklin. Uh, therefore, although uh, protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism uh, was not a book which uh, Max Weber wrote for publication. Rather, these are his unfinished manuscripts which he was preparing for writing the book called Economy and Society. Unfortunately, he, uh, you know, the publication of the book Economy and Society could not uh, take place during the lifetime of uh, Max Weber. And uh, this book, Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of uh, Capitalism, was published during the time of Max Weber. And uh, although it was the initiative of uh, Talcott Parsons and not Max Weber, but this is a fact that uh, when the, the manuscript uh, uh, came to the eyes of Max Weber, he did not uh, decide to protest against it. Are you getting the point? Now why he did not protest it is a question uh, <laughs> and, big, and why Mahatma Gandhi selected Jawaharlal Nehru as his successor or as big as you know uh, why Anna movement uh, led to marginalization of Anna Hajare and emergence of Arvind Kedriwal? Or why Vladimir Putin became the, uh, you know, beneficiary of glass most initiated by Mikhail Gorbachev uh, in, you know, in Soviet Union, but indirectly supported by the uh, CIA of United States of America and also by uh, Pope John Paul II, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. Uh, the fact remains that although we cannot uh, verify the thesis that in the United States or anywhere in the world the Calvinist ideology uh, functions as an impetus, as an inspiration, as some sort of, uh, you know, uh, correlated phenomena with the rise of uh, capitalism uh, in the United States of America. But it cannot be denied that the same Protestant ideology of John Calvin uh, represented in the United States uh, uh, more uh, forcefully by Benjamin Franklin became the nucleus around which the American politics, uh, you know, uh, had operated uh, uh, after 1776 until now. What happened? Although 
the majority of economic institutions of United States of America since 1776 were primarily owned and managed by the Jewish community who had migrated from different European countries to United States of America. That is, the American economy or the Western European economy had nothing to do with the Protestant ethic of capitalism. Sorry, uh, Protestant ethic of Calvinism, but it cannot be denied at the same time that it led to the dominance of Protestant ideology in American politics in particular. As a result, uh, in the history of United States from the first president, George Washington, uh, to the present uh, president, Joe Biden, all the president except two were associated with the same Protestant, uh, you know, spirit, uh, you know, which, uh, which, which uh, John Calvin, Benjamin Franklin or Max Weber uh, was articulating. Therefore, uh, Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism is uh, terribly important to understand the dominance of uh, Protestant ideology in American politics because it is not even 1%, 0.1%. You know, since 1776 till 2021, all American presidents except two. And who are these two? who are not protestant, uh, one is of course Barack Hussein Obama and second was a Catholic president, very popular Catholic president who was assassinated during uh, his presidency when he was president. I am talking about John F. Kennedy. He was a very popular American president like Barack Hussein Obama was. But uh, you know it is fortunate that Barack Hussein Obama completed not one but two terms of eight years. But uh, you know uh, he was not tolerated to uh, John F. Kennedy and he was killed when he was on official tour within the United States of America. Therefore, the Protestant uh, ideology uh, which uh, developed around a Calvinist uh, book, which is primarily a commentary like Luther's commentary on the Bible, uh, you know, this Protestant ideology of Calvin uh, it, 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 it is more important uh, and uh, it, is, uh, it is as good or bad, uh, as bad as, uh, you know, uh, the Shiite ideology of Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran. Now, Americans claim that uh, Shiite or Islamic revolution in uh, 1979 was, was a reversal of uh, golden history of Europeans' uh, perspective. But what was uh, the right of uh, Protestant uh, ideology in the United States of America? It was as fundamentalist as uh, Iranian revolution or as fundamentalist as uh, religious uh, majoritarianism anywhere in the world, but they will point to others. For example, they will, you know, criticize the issues of human rights in Asian countries like China or, you know, uh, Iran or sometimes even India. But uh, the human right is not uh, very uh, safe guarded in the United States of America as well. Therefore, what I wanted to emphasize is that uh, uh, every book which is taught in any university is important, but it may have 
two functions. I am borrowing from R. K. Martin, Robert K. Martin. D. Manifest function and latent function. What was the manifest function of Talcott Parsons' decision to ban the English translation of uh, Lay Suicide by Baidu Khaim and the reverse uh, publication of uh, Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism by Max Weber. The one book uh, was available in French and uh, the whole world was reading the book in the French language but Parsons blocked rather banned the publication English uh, you know translation of suicide but he not only uh, got uh, the unfinished manuscript of Max Weber published into the English language you will be surprised to know who is the translator of Max Weber's unfinished manuscript on economy and society? Talcott Parsons himself. And since he was influential uh, during the, uh, you know, uh, the post-war uh, American uh, politics, he was a uh, political advisor or economic advisor or academic advisor of three very influential American presidents. Therefore, he popularized uh, this uh, unintended book of Max Weber throughout the world so far as English language is concerned. Therefore, the manifest function of the publication of Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism was to you know, distort, was to distort, to misguide economic development in the third world and the second world by the chief priest of American establishment, Talcott Parsons. Unfortunately, today, Parsonian agenda has failed. Now, no scholar worth the name accepts the economic argument of Parsonian version of Max Weber in Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. But the latent function of the book had succeeded. Even before Talcott Parsons, even before Second World War, all American presidents were Protestant. They were from Protestant ethnic group, the majority of the American native population, native in quotes, because they think that the original blacks are not natives, only the white Anglo-Saxon groups are, you know, natives. Therefore, this book, Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, as a latent function, you know, gave legitimacy, again a Weberian term, to the majoritarian rule of the Protestant voters or Protestant citizens of United States of America. But it could not, you know, convert many third world countries or second world country after the fall of the Berlin, Berlin Wall to promote Protestant religion as secular religion, to promote Protestant spirit 
as the scientific spirit of development. Now, this understanding of my generation is primarily based on the alternative, you know, theoretical apparatus provided by Karl Marx in Capital Volume 1. Had there been no capital, you would not have been able to, you know, negate the Parsonian propaganda that unless and until the developing countries of the third world or the socialist countries of the second world convert to the protestant spirit in the name of scientific spirit or secular spirit, there would have been no economic development at par with Western Europe or United States of America. Now, what we see today, China is an economic giant, much more stronger than United States of America, so far as economic concern, but of course, from military point of view, United States remains much stronger with its NATO North Atlantic uh, Treaty Association, uh, which includes uh, majority of uh, Western European countries, Japan, Turkey, Pakistan, etc. Therefore, you know, capital volume one is not uh, important for the academic activists associated with the Marxist ideology, rather. Every academic person should read capital volume one because it is worth reading. I am not denying that Max Weber's Economy and Society is also worth reading. I am not denying <coughs> that professional, uh, uh, you know, ethics and civic morals is not important. If you want to understand the contemporary world, I mean post the corona pandemic world, you will have to rely on the three foundational books, professional ethics and civic morals by Durkheim, again published after the death of Durkheim, uh, Capital Volume 1 by Karl Marx and Economy and Society by Max Weber. In case this course is still taught, although uh, all three authors died much earlier. Marx died in 1883, Durkheim died in 1917, Max Weber died in 1920. We are still reading them. It is more for these three seminal works. Uh, Capital Volume 1, Economy and Society and Professional Ethics and Civic Morals. But in India, you know, the syllabus changed very, very slowly. And, uh, you know, in a compulsory course, you cannot take a qualitative jump and you can say that I will not teach what others teach in the world. Therefore, as a, you know, uh, moderate teacher following uh, middle path of the Buddha, I have been trying to give you my best understanding of the classics uh, which I have referred to and uh, this is uh, my uh, first introduction uh, and uh, here I have tried to introduce uh, the remaining uh, one third uh, of the portion and uh, please read uh, in case it is possible for you uh, to read uh, Capital Volume 1, at least you read the introduction by 
Hans uh, Mendel in uh, in the Penguin Classics or Mac Lennon in the Oxford book. In case you are unable to read because of uh, paucity of time or technical reasons, uh, because you know there are limitations of online teaching, then uh, you can rely on my lectures. I will give focus lecture, two focus lectures on Capital Volume 1. Uh, and I will be dealing with the concept of base and superstructure. Then I will come to uh, the concept of power and morality in Marx, Weber and Kheim in the third class next week. And uh, then I will give again two lectures on this the following week. Thank you.